Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be installing the Windows subsystem for Linux on Windows 10. If you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, please make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more programming in Linux videos. Let's get right into it. Windows subsystem for Linux is also known as WSL and today we'll be installing WSL 2, the second update to WSL. We'll also be using Ubuntu today and that will be the 20.04 version. So let's get started. First, we're gonna go to the start menu and start searching for features. If you just type in features, you'll be able to find something that says turn Windows features on or off. Go ahead and click on that and you'll get this screen here that allows you to go ahead and select various different features. And what we're looking for in here is at the very bottom, you'll find the Windows subsystem for Linux. Let's go ahead and check this box and hit OK. Windows will begin searching for the required files to install the system. And it should be fairly quick, but will require you to go ahead and restart your computer. But we're going to go ahead and wait on this because we want WSL2, so we need one more feature installed. I'm going to hit a don't restart and wait a second. And now I'm going to go ahead and just check my version of Windows to make sure that WSL2 is available. So we can do that also by hitting the start menu and let's go ahead and search for WinVER. And that's a command that you can run and you see right here it says run command. We'll click on that and what you'll get is a window here that tells you the current version and build. So what you're looking for is something over version 2004 and build number 19041 or higher. So currently this Windows platform does not support WSL2, but let's go ahead and search for an update. If we go back to search and we type in update, let's go ahead and check for updates. Here's the window that we expect to see. And we can see here that we have a feature update that updates this Windows 10 to version 2004, which is the one that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and download in and install now. And now this will take a few minutes to go ahead and download. After the download, you'll be required to go ahead and install the update as well as restart your computer. All right, and once your Windows update is complete, you can go ahead and hit the Restart Now button. All right, and now that we have our update installed and ready for Windows, we'll go ahead and launch the search bar and find Features again, and you'll get this window once more, and then we'll scroll to the bottom. At the bottom, we'll find a Virtual Machine Platform, and that's what we'll need in order to go ahead and run WSL2 on this machine. So let's go ahead and select that and hit OK. Give it a few moments here while it searches and applies the changes. And now it says your Windows PC needs a reboot once more, so we'll go ahead and restart it now. All right, and after the install, we're ready to go ahead and set WSL2 as our default version. What we'll need is to launch a PowerShell for this. So we'll hit the Start menu and search for PowerShell. And go ahead and run this one as administrator, so you can hit the Run as Administrator button. That'll ask you if you want to go ahead and run the application as an administrator. We'll hit yes, and you'll get a window similar to this if you did everything correctly. And in here, we want to type WSL space dash dash set dash default dash version all together and then two. So the only two spaces I have here are here and here. So after we've typed this command in, let's go ahead and press enter. All right, and now it's warning us of something. It says WSL2 requires an update to its kernel component. So let's go ahead and update that kernel component by going to this web page. And if we go to that web page, we can go ahead and see that we can download the Linux kernel update package here. So let's go ahead and do this by clicking the download latest WSL2 kernel. Now, if we do that, you'll see that something has launched at the bottom, WSL update x64 for a 64-bit architecture since I have a 64-bit computer. I'm gonna go ahead and launch this and now we'll install the Linux kernel for the Windows subsystem for Linux. Let's hit next and allow it to have administrative privileges. Finish this up real quick and it was as easy as that. So we'll rerun that command that we just did. You could either hit the up arrow or type in again, WSL space dash dash set dash default dash version 
space two. I'll go ahead and put that in the description below if you need it. Press enter, and now we get for information on key differences with WSL2, please visit this website so you can see the differences, but we don't need to do that. We've successfully enabled the WSL2 as our default version of SWL. All right, and now it's our turn to go ahead and install a Linux distribution of our choice and run it through WSL on Windows. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. The way we can do this are really two ways, but here's a pretty good link that has all the different versions of Linux currently available. Some do cost a little bit in order to go ahead and install, but we're going with the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS version today, which is free. So if we just click on that, that'll take us to another link and we'll hit get. And it says now that we can open up the Microsoft store from here. So I'm just going to do that. You can also just search for Ubuntu inside the Microsoft store if you want and not have to go through this website, but I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below in order to do the same thing I did. All right, go ahead and hit get, and then you'll see this screen here. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It helps support the channel as well as bring new members to the channel. Let's select the install button now, which will begin downloading Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and then install it. This of course is for WSL2. And once everything's ready, you'll get the launch button that's available and you can hit launch. Now we get a new terminal here that tells us installing. This may take a few minutes. So after this is processed, we'll be able to set up our new user for the Ubuntu system. So as it asks here, let's go ahead and put in our new username. The user I'll be using is SavvyNick, and then I'm going to put a password in for SavvyNick. Just make sure you remember the password because you'll have to use it in order to log in. Go ahead, type that password in. It's not gonna show up here because it's hidden, so other people can't see it but know that while you're typing, it is taking the characters. So retype that password once more, and as long as things match and you press enter, you'll be entered into your new system. Congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully installed Ubuntu 20.04 on the Windows subsystem for Linux version 2, but we'll want to take this one step further and go ahead and install a graphical user interface, also known as a desktop environment here in Ubuntu, so we can use it instead of just using the command line interface that's currently in front of us. If this is enough for you, this is a good stopping point. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and continue. All right, in order to go ahead and use a desktop environment inside of Windows with our Ubuntu install, we'll need something called VCX SRV, which is short for VCX server. This will help us render and use the desktop environment on Ubuntu once we install it. So I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below in order to go ahead and download the VCX server, Windows X server. You can also find it by Googling VCX serve and the first link will be the sourceforge.net download for it. Otherwise you can go to the GitHub page for it and access the same download from there as well. Once the download is finished, you'll have the installer for VCX serve. And uh, you can go ahead and launch it. This is the 64-bit version for my 64-bit computer. Make sure to access it wherever you downloaded it to. And go ahead and give it administrative privileges in order to run. This will be a fairly simple process in order to go ahead and install it. We'll choose a full type of install. And uh, the desktop shortcut's fine for me. You can choose whether or not you want that. And then the default file location and program files is fine for me. I'm going to go ahead and hit install. This will take just a moment here. Once the install is completed, you can go ahead and hit close. You'll also see this new icon pop up if you chose it called X launch and we'll be launching this later. But for now, let's go ahead and hold off. Let's open up that command line interface that we had access to before. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen in order to issue some commands. The first command I'm going to issue is sudo apt update. This will just update the repositories here on Ubuntu. That way we have access to the latest repos. Give this a few moments. And once this is finished, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen again so we can issue another command. We'll do sudo apt install. And let's go ahead and choose our desktop environment. I'm going to choose the XFCE4 desktop environment. And I can install it by just typing XFCE4 here at the end. So it's sudo space app space install space XFCE4. And I'm going to press enter. Now there's a lot of libraries that are required to install this desktop 
environment, and you can see it's going to take about 824 megabytes of space. If you're good with that, you can go ahead and press enter for the default yes, and the packages will begin installing, as well as the dependencies that are needed for any of the packages that will be installed. This will take a few minutes. After everything has been downloaded and the install has begun, we'll be asked what the default display manager we want to use for the given X server. I'm going with the default here, the GDM3. I'll go ahead and press enter. The install process will continue here. And once everything's installed, we're now ready to look up an address that we need. So I'm going to clear the screen and type cat cat forward slash etc forward slash resolv dot conf for config and we'll press enter. This will spit something out at us. We'll make note of this name server address right here. Mine's 172.17.128.1. Make sure to go ahead, write this down and save it somewhere because we will be using it. And following that, let's open up a file. I'm gonna use my favorite text editor here, nano. And then after that, use the home directory and open up bash rc. So make sure you put the dot before bash rc and press enter. Now scroll down to the very bottom of the screen where we're going to create a new entry. After you've gotten to the very bottom, let's type in export space capital display equals now this is where the address that you just recorded comes into play. So mine's 172.17.128.1. And then I'm going to put a colon and a zero after that. Once I'm ready, I'm going to press control X to go ahead and save the current file. I'll type Y to go ahead and save it and enter to overwrite it. Now we need to go ahead and reload this. We'll type source tilde forward slash dot bash RC and press enter. And we're very, very close to finishing up here. Just a few more things. At this point, we can go ahead and run the X launch application that we got done installing earlier. And in here, you can go ahead and select whatever you want. I'm going with the one window without a title bar. That's the one I like the most. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next then. I'm using start no client, the first option and the default option, hitting next. Everything is good in here as far as the default, but I'm going to add an additional parameter for the VCX serve and that parameter is dash AC. So make sure to go ahead and use that and hit next. And now I'm finished with the configuration. You can also save the configuration for later use. So I'm gonna do that right now and press save to wherever you wanna save the config file. And next time you can use that configuration in order to launch v VCX serve. Go ahead and press finish and that should load up a new screen. It should be a black screen with nothing on it. Let's go ahead and go back to our Ubuntu command line interface and launch one last thing and we should be ready. All right, back in this terminal, we'll go ahead and type start XFCE4 all together, one word and press enter. That should start the XFCE desktop environment. And now if we go back to our VCX serve display, we should have a desktop. Congratulations, if you made it this far, you've successfully done everything, including install WSL2 on Windows, install Ubuntu 20.04 for WSL2, and install a desktop environment, XFCE, for Ubuntu that you can now access. If you click on the root file system, you can navigate through your Ubuntu file system. On the bottom, you have access to a file browser, search, a web browser, a terminal, and a few other things. If you launch a terminal, you can run htop, which gives the current resource usage here. Currently, system claims it's not really using any CPU, but the memory usage here is about 333 megs out of 25 gigs. We have 45 tasks with 136 threads running and a bunch of tasks in the background here. All right, I'm gonna exit out of here and close this terminal. Well, I hope you enjoyed this install of WSL2, Ubuntu, and a desktop interface. If you did, make sure to go ahead and smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. And also make sure to go ahead and subscribe below. Hit that notification bell for future Linux and programming videos. And if you want, feel free to join our Discord server where you can find Linux community members and myself. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another video.